Uh, I think this is probably one of the more important programs that we are uh, that we're that we've done um, or are planning to do in the course of the time that we've been doing them uh, because it it hits a um, a subject that's really important and that has hit a lot of households that often gets brushed over and, and, and cover it up and cover it up until we see what we've seen in you know what in recent days with the suicide of, of Kate Spade and um, a number of days later uh, Anthony Bourdain. Bourdain. So um, and, and 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 not that we are condemning the actions of either of those people. We're just sort of trying to explain or or, or, or help people understand that these sort of events and the things that that led to um, these suicides are prevalent in a lot of households. In most homes, and and some of you may not even know that it's happening to your family members. Uh, that, you know, and don't think that this is, oh, this is just a Hollywood uh, celebrity thing that's going on. No, it happens right next door. It happens to your coworkers. It happens to your church, your family, your church family. It happens more than you think. Yes, it's um, that sort of, this sort of mental illness that we are, that we, that we often only see when we hear about the suicide of, or the attempted suicide of, of a celebrity is, is, is taking, you know what, that's what a mental illness is taking place all around us. Um, and again, like Debbie said, you know what, our, 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 some of our co-workers are going through the very same thing. Um, so, you know, some of the people that we, you know, we sit in church with every, every, you know what, every week are going through some of the very same things for all and a sundry amount of reasons. So we really want to make sure that people are aware um, people the, um, can understand it, um, and and that is not a defect. There's no, there's nothing wrong with being. It's just like if somebody has cancer, aren't you going to help them and give them treatment and do things to to help them with that? Mental illness is an illness. It's a physical thing that happens to people's body because of trauma and stress that has happened to you um, because of, 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 of childhood issues and things, things that they have been, people have been carrying in their brain for years and something triggers it to come back up or something triggers it to go way beyond. I mean, you may be going through menopause, you may be going through all kind of hormonal things and, and that along with what's already in your brain can trigger all kinds of thoughts and things you know we I used to always say I don't see how somebody could possibly you know want to end their life how that is that's just crazy why would you want to hurt yourself yeah and but they I, don't think they're hurting themselves no 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 they don't you know what and I think people get get caught up in the um, get caught up in the echo chamber that ends up being their own brain that that, that a lot of times ends up being their own, own, own undoing um, and sometimes people have chemical imbalances that are real physical reasons mm -hmm. uh, why they end up in deep depression, why they end up um, deciding um, that the world, and, and we, when we hear this all the time, that the world will be better off without them, or they're in such pain that that's the only, that's the only way they, that, that, that they see out of their pain. Um, and, um, you know, frankly, we, we have, you know, when, people, when we're talking about um, Kate Spade and, and Anthony Bourdain, there are 20 to 22 uh, veterans that commit suicide in this country every single day. Yes. Can you imagine? Every single day they commit suicide. Um, obviously, most of them are victims of PTSD, um, which is, and, and, I'll, and I'm going to talk about that a little later, because PTSD isn't just regulated to people from, who, who have experienced combat. Um, you can, uh, they're all sort I mean, it's, it's post-traumatic shock um, uh, syndrome, that's yes. right. Okay. Regular life issues can, can put cause you into P PTSD. PTSD. So, um, Traumatic stress from, uh, from illness. Illness? Like we went through a yeah. few years ago can push you to the point of, and, and I feel like that's what I kind of had in the last few years. Um, because of, you know, 
the dealing of, of, of the shock of my husband getting ill and different things going on and I had a high stress job and you know there were times when I would stay in my house the whole weekend not want to deal with anybody not want to talk with anybody just to get my brain and my body back together enough just to go to work the next week so it, it's it's something that that came into our household so, so, so you know we we've experienced it and and after my surgery um, actually it, it was interesting um, even before my surgery, I was getting counseling from people um, in, in, in the hospital that were that were saying that a lot of people who have heart surgery um, end up with depression afterwards, mm -hmm. um, and 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 you do. Uh, and, and, and I think for I think for all sorts of reasons, I think that when you go through something again that traumatic, uh, where where you where you where you almost die, um, it is something that you really really have to come back from. And you, you, yes, you start reevaluating your life. All those things are reevaluating why you're here and blah 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 blah. And, and quite frankly, you feel like crap. Especially all when the you're time. a Christian. When you're a Christian, you you question God. You know, God, why did you let this happen? What is going on? I'm a, a regular, you know, churchgoer, and I'm a regular, you know, uh, help people, and I do things, and and you think I'm a good person. Why does this happen to us? Well, because good things happen. Because bad things happen to good people. Yes, uh, that's life. Yes, um, I work with somebody who, um, who who is an awesome, awesome individual that went to the doctor because she was feeling bad and ended up having most of her leg, most of one of her legs amputated. Um, all and it happened to all her in all about a week and a half. Um, so, like they say, crap happens. Uh, but it's it's it, 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 it's it's how you deal with it, and it is perfectly understandable um, how some people deal with it. Now, unfortunately, some people you know what end up in life situations where they think that that it is appropriate and good for them to end their own lives. Now, we don't have to go that far, and a lot of that, like I said before, people end up in these echo chambers in their brains because they don't let other people in. Um, so we hope that uh, we can um, make sure that if you're going through something, tell somebody. Don't isolate yourself. Which is what you do when you're depressed. You tend, you, you you tend, tend to want to isolate, isolate yourself. yourself. And you don't want anybody to know mm -hmm. that you're feeling bad or you're feeling, feeling a certain way. Um, it's like that stupid drug commercial. God, I hate that commercial about um, this antidepressant where... Where she's taking the medicine and the, and the little sad face is following her around the whole time, like it, like it could just pop up at any time, um, because there there are ways people people come back from depression. Uh, people, I mean, I mean it, it isn't something that once you are are you even diagnosed at, with depression that you have to stay with for the rest of your life. People come back from that and live and and live very fulfilled lives. Happy lives. Um, so. But you got to tell somebody. You can't live in that. You can't live in that cave that you're building for yourself. You got to tell somebody. And some some steps that you can take that can do that are getting some counseling. Uh, if you work somewhere, I'm pretty sure that your job supplies uh, health insurance or something. But even if you can't do it that way, it's it, you can get free help. Um, we're going to give some phone numbers and information on, you know, you know how to get help. But try to, to talk to someone. And, and spouses, if you notice that your spouse is dealing with issues and dealing with something, don't just think, oh, she's been there before. It's the same thing. And I'm sure that's what Kate Spade's husband thought. You know, we've been through this before and we'll just, you know, be apart for a while until she gets better and things, you know, don't let it go. Don't, don't think that they can handle it because sometimes they can't handle it. Sometimes they need you to step in and make them do something to help themselves. You know, get, get counseling, get some help, talk to your pastor at church. That your pastor is obligated to keep this information confidential. And they can, they can help you through different things and, and help give you scriptures and things to read and how to meditate to help yourself get, come back from, from that dark side. Even if the doc, you know, my uh, doctors have offered me medication, but, uh, you know, I, I want to 
wait till I get to a point that I really need it. But medication, it you know, if you need medication, some people do. Take the medication. Take the medication. Um, do what the doctor tells you. See a doctor. See a counselor. See your pastor. Get some help. Talk to your husband or, or your wife. You know, let them know what's really going on. That's the person that's the closest to you. You know, and sometimes you sleep right next to each other and you don't you don't even tell that person. It's it's just odd. Well, because people you know, I think we live in a culture where everybody is supposed to be supermen and superwomen and, 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 and never show any you know, any any signs of weakness. Uh, but but frankly sometimes you just have to let you have to let you have to let somebody else in. And again, David makes a great point. If, I mean, if you attend, if you attend church, go go talk to your pastor, go talk to your priest or your reverend, whomever, and let somebody. I mean, I, so yeah, that's the important thing. Let somebody know, because I'm sure, like we hear afterwards in both of these cases. I mean, mm -hmm. that are the big cases. Nobody knew. Nobody, 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 or nobody knew it was that bad. Everybody, everybody's surprised because it's like, oh, when I saw her before, she seemed to have it all together and things were great. I talked to her last night. Uh, I don't know. Like, and everybody's, everybody, everybody's, everybody's lovely. Because sometimes when they are at the point where they are fine and they're saying everything's good, I'm gonna, you know, blah blah blah, and they have made their decision. They have made that decision that you're better off without me. Well, they've made the decision, and that, and, and making that decision gives them a certain amount of peace. Mm -hmm. um, They're at peace. So, I mean, so the idea is to make sure, make sure you let somebody else in. Uh, if you're, you know, if, you know, if somebody, if you, if you guys are feeling a certain way, um, and you know what, and not every case of it's that severe of the blues, as we call it, is you know what can necessarily lead to suicide. And I understand, and you know what, and, and I know some days you're just not feeling it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Some days you're like, <sighs> I don't want to deal with you know? the world. <laughs> I don't want an adult. I don't want to be an want, adult. I don't want a Monday today. Mm -hmm. You know what, I, it, and, and that's, you know what. And, and that's normal. And that's normal. But if, but if it's insistent, it goes on for days, maybe months. weeks, months, where you just don't want an adult every day, um, then maybe you should, talk, then not maybe, then you should talk to somebody. And again, we're not talking about, you know, when you wake up one day and go, eh, I think I'll just stay in bed, just screw it, I hate these people. <laughs> you know, and then, and then you're I mean, you're, and then you're fine. Um, but uh, because I, I think that most of us um, go through that from time to time, especially when things, maybe things don't work out like you, like you want, maybe the bills don't get paid like you want and you're frustrated, that, that's, that's different. But again, if it's, if it's something that's persistent, um, then you want to talk to somebody. Then you really want to get uh, with somebody. Oh, look! Look who's on. Yes. Ms. Hey, Miss Miss Cloney. <laughs> it's such a pleasure. Thank you. We're so honored. Um, so that's really, really important. Um, talk to somebody. And if you don't have, you got that number? Yes. Cool. And if you don't, I mean, and and and, and even if you don't have a a relative or, or, or a pastor or a priest or a reverend to talk to or the person next door or a spouse or whatever. You can, I mean, there are there are free national. There's a free national hotline that you can talk to. Um, that number is one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. Get on the phone, call them up, and it's posted on our site as well. If you need the, to to reference that number, one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. Get some help. Call them up. And other things that we have found, you know, in the last few years that helps us is exercise. And I know you don't have to go out and get a gym membership and all this stuff. Or and, run a marathon. And, and put a gym in your back spare bedroom and all that stuff. Just a simple thing is walking every day. Just get up and walk on your lunch break, in the evenings you know, in the morning, whenever you get a chance, and you know, if you work somewhere that you can walk around, you know, um, on your breaks or whatever, take a walk and, and keep your, your body moving. The, the body moving like that helps to stimulate, what do they call them, endorphins? Endorphins. <laughs> that endorphins are your, are your happy hormones. Yes. Um, and, uh, and a lot of times it, when people are, are, are clinically depressed, um, there is a lack of endorphins, so um, their endorphin production is 
is somehow suppressed. Um, so yeah, anything that releases endorphins. Mm -hmm. um, and I find it very good for my, for me in dealing with you know my little days when I'm down. If I can just get a good walk in, you know, a good 20 minutes, 15 minutes, or whatever, just that to get your body moving and, and feeling better, it, it you will see a world of good in that to to exercise. Um, you, there are yoga classes, and a lot of the yoga classes help you mentally better. You know, you can get your mental uh, things going better with yoga because it helps you become centered and get calm. Namaste. Yeah. Namaste. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to go to yoga because I can't pull my leg up over my head like that. No, no. Would, but those are just suggestions. Would do my sadness things. any better to break my leg? <laughs> I was I was trying to do some yoga from that yeah. Namaste, and I, and I didn't stay, and my leg broke. Off. <laughs> no, your leg head. stayed. I stayed, <laughs> and, and, and it got broken. So, uh, but no, no. Again, if I mean, if you can in, if you can naturally um, increase your endorphins, that's good because that's going to because that's what the drugs do. The drugs. Um, promote endorphins. So people who who, who work yes. who work out or run or put them or are purpose, purposely and sometimes it's hard put themselves in more positive situations. Um, get out of pe get away from people who are terminally negative. Mm -hmm. um, some people are terminally negative, and it doesn't have the same effect on them um, as it has on the people around them. So sometimes you have to change your environment. Um, all those, you know, what all those things. There's a bunch of things that you can do uh, to to ha to help yourself, and you should. And and you and I and, and and my feeling is that you must. You must do a lot of these things to help yourself get out of the situation, um, or or at least notice. Um, but I think the number one thing is, is is make sure that you tell somebody. You don't have to go. You don't have to go through it alone anymore. I mean, it, it isn't the. It isn't. You know, we're not back in the 1950s where um, depression is something that, that you that you should be ashamed of because it's some sort of internal fault, it's some sort of it's your fault, it's some sort of sin, it's sort of some some sort of thing that's bad and and you should be ashamed of it. Um, that's just not true. I mean, I guess, I think I think in the 40s and the 50s and earlier that may have been the case, but you know, fortunately that's not the case. That's not the case anymore. Uh, you can I mean, everybody goes through it at some level, and if you're going through it persistently. Talk to somebody, please, yes. please talk to somebody, because suicide, frankly, is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Um, and 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 again, not trying to judge anybody who, who I mean, I'm not try, I'm not judging Kate Spade or or Anthony Bourdain or any anybody else um, that um, that has made, made a, that choice. that horrible choice. But the 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 collateral damage is so severe. To me, it's a selfish choice because you're you're thinking only of yourself, and you know I need to get out of this pain. I need to get out, and then you have all these people that love you so much that you leave behind. You crush it, you. I mean, you, you damage your children in a way that they never recover from, and we see, and we see all, and, and you see all the time. Again, I'm not judging people. I'm just I'm just sort of giving you what examples what we see. What we see, we, you know, you see children of, of of people who have committed suicide, commit suicide. It's a generational thing. It starts to be generational, so um, and so you leave behind all this collateral damage. Uh, your friends, who are crushed when they find out that you've killed themselves, your coworkers who love you, find out that you've killed your, I mean, find out that you committed suicide, they're crushed. Um, so. And that's really, you know what, and, and, and I, I know when you're in it, that's really hard yeah. to see. It's hard to see I when understand. you're dealing with, you know, feeling that way and, you know, you don't see a way out. Um, there is a way out. Always know that there is a way out. And, and people really care. You know, people care. And, and, and I think that's what the echo chamber says to people that they don't care. But people do care. People do care, um, and there are people out there who want to help. So, 
always hook yourself up with somebody. You know what, again, if, if you need somebody to talk to, the number is 1-800-273-8255. 1-800-273-8255. And we'll put that in the comments. Um, that number is also on our Facebook page. Um, and uh, we'll, I'm going to put I'm going to put that number on the website, and um, it'll be um, on the YouTube video down here at the bottom of the screen. Or actually, it's going to be up at the other little top of the screen. Yeah, top of the screen that has the exclamation point. That's what it is. <laughs> Forget forgetting my punctuation. Uh, so where they have, have a little exclamation point up there, you click on it, and that number will show up. And I want to say that even if you uh, want to, to communicate to us and send us an email with additional help that you want, um, you know, want more information on what the things that, some of the things that we did to, to overcome our depressions and our um, anxiety and, and, you know, I would, I, pretty sure that neither, neither one of us was at the point of thinking of suicide, but um, we have dealt with certain forms of, of that in our home, and uh, we try to, we're trying to talk to people to help people out from our experience. Are we professionals? Are no, we, I'm not Are we perfect? No, we're no. not. But if you've got, you know, a question about maybe where to seek help, uh, where appropriate to seek help. You know, well, you can you can direct message us if message us here. Uh, you can send us. You, you can go to our website and contact us off the website, and um, we'll try to you know we'll try to help you navigate and direct yourself to some help uh, because we care. I mean, we don't want any more fam we don't want any more families to go through what the Spade family is going through or what the Bourdain family is going to through or some of the families that we know personally. Are are still are still going through. Yes. I mean, they've had. I mean, they've had suicide um, that, that that happened some of them years ago, and they're still, still, Wondering. still going through it. Because it, it leads you to at a point where you wonder, what could I have done? What What did I miss? What did I miss? What What you go through? You will play through the last time you saw them. What did they say? What could have I have done? You know, you back and forth, and it and it'll put you into a depression. One trying to figure out what you could have done to save them. Yeah. So, again, there is, there is so much collateral damage. So if you know if if we're the only people that you can that, that you can reach out to, again, we are not mental health professionals by any stretch of the imagination, but but we but, but we are willing to to help you you know navigate to some help. Uh, so. And especially in our community. And I, you know, in our black community, there are a lot of people dealing with depression and different things that. But well, black people don't get no counseling. We don't go no. to no psychiatrist. What? You need Jesus. You need Jesus. And you do. Or get a drink. Yeah, you <laughs> get do a drink. need Jesus. Or eat. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we do. We tend to eat our way, and and sometimes that's a gradual suicide. People, I'm I'm getting kind of ugly here, but. You know, we tend to to take drinking. We, you know, you know, we laugh about it and stuff like that. Oh, that's Uncle blah blah blah. He just drink. He just drinking. Uncle got some issues. Why he's, you know, maybe he went to Vietnam or something like that. A lot of times they're drinking people's, to cover that up. People self. People in general self medicate. Self medicate. Um, and medicate themselves they, with overeating. And they do drugs and whatever. Uh, they self-medicate to, to sort of cover up what else is going on. Um, you know, Uncle Joe may, you know, may he, you may see him drunk a lot, but maybe, maybe Uncle Joe, hey Priscilla, uh, may be in a situation where he was in Nam or he was in Korea mm -hmm. and has, P has undiagnosed PTSD and... Um, He's just dealing with it the way he knows how. And, because we, I mean, and stays you know, and stays, you know, with, with a certain amount of um, split malt liquor in his veins to ease the pain. So, again, this, this is something that a lot of people go through. I mean, this is not anything that is, that is, that is left just with celebrities. Um, that's, that's, that, and and, and it's for, it, it happens to everybody. It happens to every household. And I'm sure that most people who are watching now can look at some examples of the people that they know personally. And go. You've seen that. Mm -hmm. And if you have, say something. Reach out to people. 
reach out to people. If you haven't seen them in a while, you haven't heard from them in a while, they've isolated themselves, um, and you know they're going through something, call them. Call them. Call Find them. Find out where they are. And say, hey, I, you know what, I love you, I was thinking about you, uh, and I'm here. It doesn't cost anything to give them a call. Nope. Text them, you know, just just find out what's going find on. Find out what's up. Find out what's up. Yeah, and then again, that number is, and again, we're going to put it in the, in the description. We're going to put it in the, in the description box on on, on the YouTube video. Um, by, by, by the way, um, we're going to, uh, we're actually recording. Yeah, see, it worked. Mm -hmm. um, we're recording this uh, to, to put up on YouTube, so. Um, so it'll be in the, in the description box down there. The the 1-800 National Suicide um, Prevention number is 1-800-273-8255. So, uh, and 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 there are and, and there are low and wherever you are, there are local people, um, maybe at your county um, health services, that deal with this kind of stuff, um, that are more than willing, that are waiting, that that want to desperately make sure that you get the help that you need. Um, so nobody has to suffer silently anymore. There's no reason to suffer silently anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I will, what we hope is that this has been some benefit to you. If this has been some benefit to you, let us know in the comments, please. Uh, let us know by sending us emails and um, let us know by uh, subscribing to our videos, uh, clicking the notification button, and um, it's about time that we got here make room for somebody else. Yes. All right. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when yes. we see you. We love you. Love you. Peace. Peace.